How do I grow my audience? It's one of the questions I get asked the most from new coaches and practitioners. And for good reason. I mean, before you can sell your services and make money doing what you love, you need people to sell those services too. So building an audience of engaged dream clients is a top priority when first starting your business and will remain a huge part of your strategy for the life of your business. Today's episode is the first in a series I'm titling Aligned Audience Attraction. Let's get into it. I'm Sean Miner, and this is Unstuck, a space for heart-centered entrepreneurs to implement both the inner work and outer strategies required to get unstuck and build the impactful, profitable business of their dreams. No hustle, grind, or long hours required. Let's get into today's session. Hey, hey there, friends. Welcome back to the Unstuck Podcast. I'm Sean, your host on each and every episode. So grateful to have you here today. So grateful for everything you do to support the show. It means the world to me. I love chatting with you all every Friday. It is the highlight of my week, and you are the ones that make it possible for me to continue doing so. Aligned Audience Attraction. That is the title of the next four episodes. I think it's going to be four. It might be three. It might be five. We'll see how fast I talk. But we've got a lot to cover is the moral of the story, enough that we are going to separate them into different episodes and kind of organize them a little bit so that you can definitely get all of the information that you need to start attracting or continue attracting an audience full of dream clients. As I said in the opening, this is something that is a huge priority from the very start, the very first day of your business, and will continue to be something that is a high priority throughout the life of your business. You will always need to be in the process of building an audience, of getting new eyes on your work. And that's really what this is. Aligned Audience Attraction, the podcast series starts today. This episode will really be an overview of the entire flow, which is actually quite simple. And then from there, over the next three to four episodes, we'll hone in on the different areas to make sure that we really get specific where we need to get specific and you have all the tools that you need to start attracting and aligned audience. First thing, I want to commiserate with you a little bit if you are someone who is starting their business and doesn't have an audience or has started their business and the audience is small, it doesn't seem to be growing, you're not finding the right people, you're doing what you think is the right things and nothing's happening. If that is you, I feel you. I have been there. Most other business owners, especially service-based business owners, have been there. In fact, everyone who, you know, if we're looking in today's world and we're looking at Instagram to determine how popular people are, how big their audience is, how successful they must be, if we're looking at things like that as a measure, which I think you probably all know by now, not, I don't agree with for sure, not super into that. But just taking that and thinking about that, every single person that starts an Instagram account, even if they now have 5 million people following them, they started at zero. Every business starts at zero. And all of us have been in that boat of, where are my people? How do I find these people? How do I let these people know I exist and what I do and that I can help them? Most of us have had these thoughts. Most of us have had to strategize and figure out the best way to reach the right people for our business. This is something that is part of building a business. And so if you are one of those people in this place where you don't feel like it's going well, you don't feel like you're doing the right things, you don't have anyone at all looking at your work. In fact, when I first started my business, I didn't have an email list at all. At the time, I didn't even know that that's what I needed. I found out shortly after. 
but I didn't have an email list. I didn't have an audience. I didn't have social media. I didn't have anything. Luckily, I had some past clients who I was then able to get in touch with kind of like via phone and ask if they wanted to work together now within my own business. I didn't have really an audience at all. And for the first three years of my business, the audience growth was very, very small. It was a trickle. Uh, And, you know, I felt like I was doing the right things. I blogged, I started my social media, I started my email list, I posted on social media at least once a day. I blogged, I think, about once a week there for a while. I emailed my list even when there was like 30 people on it and they were all people that were from my personal contacts. Like that's how I started my email list was by contacting people in my Rolodex, you know, my phone Rolodex, we'll call it, and asking if they wanted to be a part of my new business and hear tips and tricks and tools about wellness every once in a while. And luckily, most of them said yes, and they got on my email list. That was my audience for a while. And then it slowly built up. And then I started my very first podcast with my friend Meg Dahl. And that is when it exploded. That is when things got a lot easier. What we're going to talk about today will showcase why it got easier. But I'll just spill the beans right now and let you know it's because I finally figured out who I wanted my audience to be full of. I got clear on who I was trying to attract, who I wanted to work with, and then I targeted those people and they were very similar to my co-hosts, not exactly the same, which was nice, but similar. So we were able to choose topics of our podcast episodes that attracted those people that we wanted to work with. And that is basically the two second version of what we're going to talk about today. We'll get into it all much deeper, but I just wanted to share snippets of my story to let you know that what you're going through, if you're struggling to attract an audience, if you're fearful of starting your business because you don't have an audience, that is normal. That is expected, but it is part of the process of building a business to understand how to attract an audience full of clients that you want to work with and to start doing it today. Because if you don't, you don't really have a business. You don't have anyone to sell to, to help, to be of service to if you don't have an audience and if you don't continue to make that a priority. All right, first today's quote, which is from Seth Godin in his book, This Is Marketing. I love Seth Godin for all things marketing. I think he has a really good handle on what is actually important. It's very different from traditional marketing, I would say, much more focused on the person, the connection, telling stories, being of service. And so I personally really resonate with his teachings and his books, and you might as well. He has tons of books out there. This one in particular is from This Is Marketing, is what it's called. And it says, persistent, consistent, and frequent stories delivered to an aligned audience will earn attention, trust, and action. I'm going to say that again, absorb it. There's a lot of words persistent, consistent, and frequent stories delivered to an aligned audience will earn attention, trust, and action. The entire point of your business, of marketing your business, of selling your services, this is an entire marketing and sales strategy wrapped up into one sentence. This is all you need to remember and consider and keep going back to as you work to build your audience and as you work to turn those audience members into paying clients. This is what you really need to think about. We're going to talk about all of that today and in the future episodes for Aligned Audience Attraction, the series. Now I want to go over a few definitions before we get into the actual steps to attracting your audience because it's super important for you to understand each of those three words in and of themselves and how they all come together 
to create essentially your marketing strategy. And the three words are aligned, audience, and attraction. First, what do I mean by aligned? This is where the idea of your dream client comes in. And this is something we talk about basically the entire program of Unstuck Entrepreneur is centered around defining your dream client. Some call it a niche or a niche. Some call it your ideal customer. There's all these different ways that you can go about it. What I think sets the dream client apart from those others, from niching down or whatever you hear potentially some other business coaches talk about, is that we have to also focus on what feels good to us. Not just, okay, well, I've worked with this person in the past and it went well, so maybe this will be my niche. Or I've gone through this thing, so I have a lot of information about it. Maybe that should be my niche. That is part of it, for sure. Obviously, you want to work with someone that you have the knowledge and experience to work with. But also, who do you want to work with? What kind of person, what kind of client would you be so excited to talk to for eight hours a day? What topics of discussion light you up? What kind of person light you up? Who do you connect with the best? So we can't just focus on what we're good at, although we should, that's part of it, but also who do you want to work with? Who do you connect with? What would light you up? That becomes your dream client. And the more specific that you can get, the better. That is, again, something you hear so many people talk about in terms of niching down in your business. And it is very, very important. The more specific that you can get, the more specialized you can think of it, that you can get, the better, because then you have an audience to talk to. So let me give you a few examples. First of all, I see a lot of new practitioners and coaches say, I specialize in working with people who have gut health issues, who have hormonal imbalance, who have food sensitivities, who have migraines, just list all of these random things that you might know, first of all, that you can and would work with this person, but also that they might be correlated, but your audience doesn't know that. And so it looks like You don't look like you specialize in anything. And when you're someone who's suffering from migraines and has for years and can't find anyone to help them, you don't want to work with someone that also specializes in gut health and hormones and food sensitivities. You want to find the person that only works with migraines because then you know you are getting the best care. You know that you are getting with someone who truly understands you. And this is all coming from that audience perspective, from really understanding your dream client and what they are looking for. And very rarely, like we don't, none of us, if we have foot pain, would be fine going to a dermatologist because, hey, you know what? They've been to medical school, so that'll be fine. This is what your clients think about you too. And they are looking for that person that specializes in that one problem that they are having. So if you stay super general, no one's going to understand that you are their person because you're too general. Now, we can go one step deeper. And so now you're saying, okay, well, then I'll just work with hormone imbalance. Still, if you are someone who is going through this terrible menopause, and you see someone that works with hormonal imbalance, well, the question still remains, do they understand me? Do they understand what I'm going through in this terrible menopause? Or is their hormone imbalance more so for people who are still menstruating? Things like this go through our clients' minds Every second of every day when they have a problem that they are looking to solve, they want to find the best person to help solve that problem. And if it's too general, they won't understand that you are that person. So the more specific that you can get, the better. 
And as you can see, I'm very passionate about this. But what it means in terms of building your audience is that when you have an aligned audience, you know that it's full of the best people for you and your business. So you know when you talk about this specific thing, when you have a podcast episode about this specific thing, or you write a blog post, or you post on social media about this one thing, that entire audience will get it that entire audience will resonate. And so obviously, even if you have a small audience, your engagement is so, so high and you build up the warmth of that audience because you are so specific and you've really taken the time and intention to attract the right people for your work. And that is where the term aligned comes into play. The next word is audience. So what do I mean by audience? Might seem obvious, but I actually don't think it is. So let's talk about it. Your audience consists of anyone that is in kind of what I think of as your bubble. The people that know of your work, know of you, they consume your content. So these could be email subscribers, they could be social media followers, podcast listeners, blog readers, video watchers. Within this bubble that you have where you and your work are hanging out, there are also different levels of closeness to consider as well. So there are people who maybe just found out about you, just downloaded your freebie, or just happened upon your podcast and started listening Those people are considered kind of like a colder audience. And then there are people that are warmer. Maybe these people have already worked with you or they know you really well. They've been around for a few years or they were not around for that long, but they just love your work and they consume everything that you do. Like you have a podcast, they're listening. You have a blog post up, they're reading and they just love your work. So they now are a warmer audience. And it really refers to how well these people know you, how much content of yours they consume, how strong the relationship is. And at any given moment, you ideally have some people in your audience on every step of that spectrum from colder to warmer. And that's a good thing. You want to continuously have people coming into your bubble and then working their way up to get to know you better and better and better and consume more and more of your content. And then obviously, I think we all understand that as people get to that level of warmth with you, then they become paying clients, which is a great, great, lovely thing. A sign that you are not actively working on building your audience or what you're doing to build your audience isn't working would be if you find yourself only having warm audience members. If you find that the only people that you talk to, the only people that you email or the only people on your social media channels are people that have been there for a while and people that have potentially already become paying clients or have already consumed your content for a long time and not taken action, maybe it's not exactly what they need or whatever the case, no matter what, if you only have warmth, then you are not doing the right things or you haven't actively worked on building your audience. So today we are going to focus in this episode on how to get new members into your audience, which will likely be these colder members, these people that haven't heard of you before or haven't ever consumed your content. And then down the road in another episode, in a few weeks, we'll talk about how to turn those cold members into warm, how to work them up the ladder to warmth and then become paying clients. One last thing to remember about an audience is that every single business needs one. Even if you're a product-based business, even if your business is mostly local and not online, everyone still needs an audience. This is still something that is a high priority for every business. All right, last definition. What do I mean by attraction? Well, if you've been listening to the Unstuck podcast for even a few episodes, then you're probably already familiar with how I use the word attraction and what it means to me and for the case of your business. But let's go over it 
for this specific situation, which is building your audience. For me, attraction means, you know, in a more general term, when two like energies come together. If we're talking law of attraction, if we're talking energy, vibration, frequency, it's when two vibrations of similar frequencies attract to each other. And this is quantum physics. This is studied. This is science. This is what happens when two energies have the same frequency, they attract, they magnetize to each other. The same can be applied to your audience, to your business, to your financial situation, to your relationships, so many things. And again, if you've listened to this podcast, you know I'm like obsessed with this idea and it truly does work. So many cases, I know you have so many cases if you really think about it to where this also played out in your life. But let's talk in terms of your audience. So when it comes to your audience, attraction is so, so important on both sides. So you and your dream client. First of all, what frequency are you vibrating at as you create content, as you put it out into the world, as you talk about your business or don't talk about your business? What frequency are you vibrating at? That will determine who engages with your work. Yes, it's true. It really is true. What's going to happen is when you're creating content, when you're you know posting about your business and your paid offers or you're sharing tips and tricks and tools for your dream clients, it is infused with a frequency. No matter what, it can be the frequency of fear, it can be the frequency of doubt, it can be, oh, no one's going to read this anyway, why am I even bothering, this is terrible, someone's already done something like this, why am I even bothered talking about this or posting this? Or it can be infused with joy, with excitement, with confidence, with I'm so grateful that this is what I get to talk about, I love sharing about this stuff, I can't wait for my dream clients to read this or hear this and, you know, help them out. This is amazing. So you get to choose. You get to choose what frequency your content is infused with. And every single piece of content has that, has that energetic expression. And once it's infused with your energy, with that frequency, then it is going to attract that of like frequency. So I'm just going to assume that you want to work with people who are willing to do the work, who are ready to take the next step, who are excited to feel better or have some sort of change or transformation in their lives. And you don't want to work with people who aren't ready to do that work, so they're not actually going to do anything that you teach them or help them with, they're going to complain, they're going to ask for a refund, not probably part of your dream client. Am I right? That's what I thought. So what you put out into the world is who you will attract back to your work. It is going to show up and mean something to the right people when you have the frequency of those you wish to attract. It is going to show up and be significant and really like something will trigger them to pay attention, to actually read that post or to hit play on that podcast episode or watch that video or sign up for that freebie that you're offering. Something will trigger them and it is based on an energetic level. It will show up and be significant and be meaningful to the people that you are best able to support when you work on the energetics of your audience attraction. And your energy is also what's going to set you apart from everyone else in your industry. And I think just the way that things are in general today with service-based businesses, there are a lot of people doing something similar potentially to what you do. So what's gonna have you stand out from the crowd? even if you're talking about the same things, even if you're teaching the same things. For example, right now, what I'm teaching you today on this podcast episode isn't necessarily different than all of the other business coaches out there. 
but my energy is different than any other coach out there that you could potentially listen to to learn about audience attraction. So for some reason, there is some energetic expression that I am sharing with you here that is what attracts you to listen to this episode versus the other episodes out there on different podcasts about audience attraction, about growing your audience, which I'm sure there are probably millions. So there's something different. And I could easily start thinking about that, start having this imposter syndrome, start feeling like, why am I even doing this? There's already so many podcast episodes about this. There are already so many people teaching this. And that could be what I infuse in this episode. And then, hey, guess what? No one's going to want to listen, even if I kept everything the same, even if all the words were the same, the title was the same you're going to shut it off or you're not even going to listen because the energetic expression is not something that is a match for you. And I want to make sure you know right here, right now, that this is not to say that all you have to do is be quote unquote high vibe and hundreds of clients are going to magically appear at your door and demand to work with you. That is not what this is about. That's not how this works. That's not what the universal laws and manifestation say or are about or the message they convey. So I am not saying that. What I am saying is that your intention behind your audience growth is important. Your emotions going into it are important. Your purpose is important. And showing up authentically in a way that no one else can simply because you are you and you are embodying the energy that is you is important. That is what I'm saying. So anyone who thinks attraction is a bunch of rubbish, they're not thinking about attraction in the right way. What we're focused on is intention, emotions, thoughts, beliefs, purpose, and showing up authentically. All right, now that I'm off my soapbox from that, we know all of our definitions. Let's get into the how. Starts with some pre-work, as always. Your pre-work for attracting an aligned audience is to get your mind right on the whole concept. If you want to have a thriving business, if you want to help a bunch of people or really anyone at all, you need to have a good relationship, a solid, positive relationship with building an audience, with putting your work out there, with creating content consistently. This is the foundation for who you will attract, how you will attract them, how quickly and easily it will go for you. You've got to start here. You've got to lay this foundation and it has to be solid. No cracks in the foundation for building your audience, please. So what's holding you back? What's keeping you stuck in this area? We'll talk about this more after I share the steps with you, but something to start considering like, If you find yourself making excuses, if you find yourself talking about how hard it is these days to attract the right people and everywhere is saturated, how am I going to find these people? How are they going to find me? I'm really trying and it's not working. If you find yourself just not doing it because you're on this cycle, if you're on this hamster wheel of why bother, why bother, why bother, or I'm overwhelmed, 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 then we have some stories to clear up and the foundation is very shaky. And so for you to go into these three steps to attracting your audience, it's probably not gonna go well. It's either gonna be super hard, super slow, a little bit of both, you're gonna give up early. It's just not gonna feel very good. So we have to start here. I'll go over, like I said, in a few minutes, some of the things that might be holding you back, but we've got to start here. You've got to really start doing some work to see what's holding you back, what's keeping you in this place where you aren't doing these three things, or maybe you are, but not to the best of your abilities, or you're not infusing the right energy into them, these kinds of things. There's a lot to think about. Is in terms of the mindset work that comes with audience attraction, because surprisingly, there's a lot of stories there. There's a lot of limiting beliefs. There's a lot of fear involved. 
Once you've done that pre-work and you've cleared up some of the stories that have been keeping you stuck, if you've taken another path, you've chosen differently, now we're ready for the three steps to audience attraction. Yes, three steps. That's it. We very much want to make it more complicated than this. It's not. It really is not. If you are making it more complicated, then there's probably a good chance that you're using that as a deflection tool or as a response or an excuse to not actually do it if you are trying to make it more complicated than this. So here are the three steps. Number one, know your audience. We just talked about this uh, when we talked about being aligned with your audience. You have to know who exactly you help and want to help. Get very, very clear on this. As I mentioned, if you need help with this, this is something we do together in Unstuck Entrepreneur, and I'm happy to guide you through that process. But you've got to get really super clear, very specific, like create a persona that is your dream client and really, really understand them, including knowing and figuring out where they most hang out. Where do they consume content? How do they prefer to consume content? For example, if you are someone that works with Gen Zers, then they're probably on TikTok or Snapchat. If you're someone that is working with older adults, then they're probably more so on Facebook or maybe they read blog posts or listen to podcasts. So there is a difference depending on who your dream client is in what the best content creation strategy is going to be for you. And again, something that is really important, we're going to talk about this in another episode, so I'll just tease it right now, but it's also important for you to create content that you feel comfortable and be somewhere that you feel comfortable being. Like if you are working with Gen Zers, but TikTok scares the heck out of you, then that might not be the right place, but still combining the idea of where your dream clients are hanging out with what feels best for you. And you can find that sweet spot that is good for both of you. So very, very first step, very, very important step, know your audience and get really super clear on what their problem is, what solution they want to come from that problem, what would make them feel like they've gotten somewhere that their problem has been resolved? How are they feeling right now in the middle of that problem? Super important. The second step is to create consistent content that helps them. You have two things you have to do. You have to show up and you have to help them. You have to be of service. That is why you are service-based business, is to be of service, to help other people. And you being fearful of putting yourself out there, putting your work out there, creating a podcast or writing blog posts or showing up on YouTube, doing your Instagram account, you having the fear around that is keeping you from helping other people. It's keeping these people from finding the help that they need. So you have to show up and help them create consistent content that helps them. Consistent is a very big word here. It's super important. Consistency is important for both sides. First of all, it's important for you as the content creator, as the person who wants to help others to get into a rhythm, to make that part of your daily, weekly, monthly ritual. It's really important to have a schedule and I think a lot of you know I'm not someone that you know feels like you need to abide to, uh, by a strict schedule, but in my case, for my business, it really does help me to know, okay, Mondays I record podcasts, Wednesdays I write blog posts, and then you know splatter in some social media posts here and there, be, show up on Pinterest with those things I just created, boom, there's my content creation strategy. And I'll share more about this in a whole different episode specifically about content creation strategies. So don't worry, this is just an overview, like I mentioned. And it's not even like if Mondays don't work for me to record podcast episodes, then I change it. If Wednesdays don't work, if I'm not in the writing vibe, then I change it. But 
to have that rhythm, to know that that is on my calendar, to know that every week that is what I'm doing, it really helps me be consistent. And then it's also important for your dream clients to be able to count on you, to be able to expect you to know. You guys know every Friday, an Unstuck episode comes out. I may not listen to it till Monday or the next Friday or whatever, but you know the rhythm. You know what to expect. You know that is going to happen. We like, as humans, we like that consistency. We like that rhythm. We like that predictability in some ways. And especially since life is so unpredictable as it seems, this is something I know I can count on this person to show up and provide some value to me once a week or twice a week or here or there or wherever you show up. Create consistent content that helps them. That is your second step. Just show up. Just show up as you show up with your intention, show up with your energy and be you and just help. Just be of service. How cool is that? That is like the coolest thing ever. We have the ability to help a bunch of people by creating content for them. Wow. That's amazing. All right. And then the third step to attracting your audience is to put that content out into the world where your audience hangs out consistently. Again, I'm using that word. It is so important. Put that content out into the world where your audience hangs out. So we've already figured out our dream client. You've got an idea of where they probably are hanging out most, what they prefer to consume in terms of content. So now create a strategy around how to get that out into the world. So a lot of times I will see people create consistent content and actually not ever put it out there. Like, yeah, I have seven blog posts written or yeah, I've created all these uh, social media posts and then they never do anything with them. You've got to put that content out into the world with confidence and joy and excitement, really infusing it with the energetic expression that you want to convey to your audience, who you want to attract in, and just show up. Put it out there. That's really those two last two steps could be all one step. So maybe there's only two steps to audience attraction, but we'll keep it at three just to make it seem a little more robust. Uh, Okay, here's one thing you need to know. You do not have to be everywhere When we're talking in terms of putting that content out into the world, it's not like you have to make content for a blog, for a YouTube channel. You have to create these free masterclasses. You have to have a podcast. You have to be on every social media platform, which now there's like 20. That's not what this means. In fact, that's going to just probably drive you crazy and exhaust you. So please don't do that. But you have to be somewhere. You have to make a real presence somewhere and you have to show up there consistently. So it could be, and I think I've talked about this a lot on the podcast, but maybe it's only been an unstuck entrepreneur. I don't consider social media, like a social media channel to be a real tangible audience builder. I don't think of it that way. I think there's just it's just not a good strategy at all. And I'm sure we'll talk about that coming up in future episodes. So be on social media for sure as icing on the cake, but be somewhere else consistently. Find your place, find your zone, find a spot where you know your clients are hanging out, but you also feel good being there. It could be through video, it could be through writing a blog, it could be through talking on a podcast like this totally up to you, but find what feels good. Create consistent content there. All right, we're going to wrap this up just by talking quickly about those things that might be holding you back. Going back to our pre-work, because from what I see, and trust me, like I said, I have been in your shoes. I have felt these things. I have told myself these things. This is what seems to be the biggest drivers of Uh, or the biggest blocks, I guess, of putting your work out there of building an audience. And it's, first of all, fear, of course, fear of judgment, fear of rejection, fear of doing it wrong. I think there's just a lot of fear. I mean, it's a scary thing to put yourself out there, to sell your services, to show up as you, especially in 
this world we have now where there's so much content, everyone's creating content, everyone's on social media, everyone has a podcast, everyone has a blog, whatever it is you might be telling yourself. And a lot of it is around what if no one likes this? What if no one sees this? What if I actually accidentally say something wrong? What if I don't get any likes? So what if I do all this work and nobody listens? Like there's a lot of what ifs and it all comes back to fear. And it often sounds like no one's going to look at it anyway. What's the point? Or this blah, blah, blah is so saturated. What's the point? Or someone already created something like this. What's the point? This is real. And it is all based on fear. So if we're looking at peeling back the layers of the onion in terms of your blocks from putting out regular, consistent, really great, amazing content, this is most likely stemming from fear and imposter syndrome, which also stems from fear. But sounds like someone already said or did this, why bother? My posts aren't as good as hers. Why bother? I don't have enough followers to do a podcast. Seems like a lot of work. No one's going to listen. Imposter syndrome. And a lot of it also, I think it's a combination of fear and then just like lack of know-how, which is a very practical thing as to why you're not putting out content, why you haven't started a podcast, why you aren't writing blog posts, whatever it is. It's this lack of know-how and totally understandable. I was there too. That's why I created an entire program to help people through the know-how. But that all combines in to become overwhelm. And I find overwhelm to be a coping mechanism for fear. So if you didn't have that fear, if you didn't have the imposter syndrome, the fear of judgment or rejection, you would be motivated to figure out how. If you weren't scared, then that overwhelm wouldn't be there or it wouldn't feel as strong. It'd be more so like excitement and determination and motivation to figure this out. And you would read the posts, you would join the groups, you would have the programs that teach you how to have a podcast, how to have a blog post, how to do this all consistently. You would figure it out. So I find that a lot of people say, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't know what to do. And if we really peel back those layers, there's a a layer of fear there at the heart of it. So if that is you and you feel overwhelmed by this all, Check on those stories, check on the fear situation of that. And then yes, the other side, the practical side, the very easy to fix side is the lack of know-how or, or the lack of time or the lack of energy, the lack of all of these things that are real. And you have to find something that works for you. Like I mentioned, we're going to talk about this again too. In the future, you have to find a strategy, a content creation platform that works for you and the time that you do have, the energy that you do have, and it has to be something that you can do consistently. If it's you spend an hour recording a podcast once a week, great, or you spend two hours writing three blog posts and then you don't have to worry about it for a month, cool. Like You just have to find something that works for you and that you can commit to and then commit to it and be consistent and do it and it's and and infuse it with the right energy not like i have to do this or this is the only way that i can grow my audience but more so i get to help people i have a tool that will help someone else i know something that someone else might not know i might as well share it and that is a really fun place to be it's a really exciting place to be and a really fulfilling place to be so come at it with that lens instead of oh, well, Sean told me I have to have a podcast or I have to write a blog post. I guess I'll go do that. And I don't really have the energy and I don't really know what I'm doing. My blog posts aren't good. I'm not a good writer. You know, like we can really get into this zone. Our ego can, I guess. And that's not what we're trying to do here. If you lack the know-how, that is an easy fix. As I mentioned, you can do it all. You will learn it all in Unstuck Entrepreneur. I have tools and guides and to-do lists for blog posts and YouTube videos and podcasts and everything that you would want as a content creation strategy, that is not the problem. But if you are using that as a mechanism to keep from doing it, and instead you're feeling like, oh, well, I'm overwhelmed, or you're just basically using those as excuses, 
then we have some fear there. And hey, guess what? We also work on that in Unstuck Entrepreneur. So you can see I have been in these shoes, which is why I now am teaching you to step into a new pair of shoes to become the content creator that you desire and that will help you call in the right people to your business, to your work, so that they can become paying clients and get the help that they need and you can build a business you love, a business that works for you. All right, my friends, that will do it for episode one of Aligned Audience Attraction. Some of the other things we're gonna cover over the next three to four episodes, your content creation plan, how to establish a relationship with your dream clients, do you really need an email list, and how to decide on a killer freebie. So that's what's coming up the rest of the month of December here on the Unstuck Podcast. If this is something that helped you, if you found this valuable, what would be so valuable to me in exchange is for you to share this episode with someone you know who is a coach, a practitioner, a solopreneur, and working on building their audience. It would mean so much to me. It would be so helpful for them. So let's spread the word. Let's get this out there that aligned audience attraction is the way to go to build a business that works for you and helps a lot of other people at the same time. So important, my friends, so important. All right, until next time, take care. Hey friend, real quick before you go, don't forget to head over to my website and take the quiz to find out your solopreneur personality type. I've created a super fun, super informative two minute quiz that will show you which one of the four solopreneur personality types you fall into. Could it be the boss, the socialite, the visionary, or the supporter? Which one are you? Not only is it just fun to know more about yourself, especially as it relates to your business, but it's also really important information so you can be sure that you're building a business that works for you based on your energy, your personality, and your desires. Did you ever take those quizzes from the Cosmopolitan magazine back in the day? It's kind of like that, but with actual solid questions and real helpful tips and advice at the end. You can find the What's Your Solopreneur Personality Type quiz right on the homepage of my website at seanminer.com. Head there now to take the quiz, then let me know over on Instagram at Unstuck Entrepreneur what your type is. I'll see you over there.